Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to solve a trigonometric equation that has a pretty nasty final answer in the sense that it's not involving special angles. And the motivation for this was a problem that we were working in my calculus class. Find the values of C guaranteed by the mean value theorem for integrals for the function over the given interval. And the function was 54 secant squared x, and the interval was negative pi over 4 to pi over 4. And so what happens um, when you're trying to satisfy the mean value theorem, you're essentially satisfying the equation um, f of c times b minus a, which is the end of the interval and the beginning of the interval, b and a. f of c times b minus a equals the integral from a to b of f of x dx. And and so what you have to do is to evaluate the integral, perform the subtraction, and then f of c is going to be equal to the quotient of the two. So you find that f of c in this case is equal to 216 over pi. You plug c into the function, which was 54 secant squared x. We would have 54 secant squared c, and now we need to find c. And we're going to pick up there. So we had 54 secant squared c equals 216 over pi. Well, the first thing that we want to do is get the trigonometric function by itself. So I'm going to multiply both sides by a 54th. We are going to be left with secant squared of c is equal to 4 over pi. Now that I have the secant squared by itself, I prefer to work in terms of cosines and sines. So this is really 1 over cosine squared of c equals 4 over pi. Taking the reciprocal of both sides then, the cosine squared of c is pi over 4. Now let's apply the square root property to see that cosine of c is plus or minus the square root of pi over 4, or plus or minus the square root of pi over 2. So we are looking for some angle such that the cosine of it gives us this funny looking um, ratio here. Keep in mind, by the way, that in the original problem, we were told that we're restricting x, which means c as well, to negative pi over 4 to pi over 4. If you think in terms of our unit circle, it's not a bad idea to just make sure this is within the range of cosine. I know with confidence because of the mean value theorem for integrals. In this context, it's guaranteed that C exists. It must be that there is a reasonable answer. But just for the sake of argument, this is about 0.88 plus or minus. So that's definitely a value that we can have for cosine. How do we find this angle C given its cosine? Well, on the interval from negative pi over 4 to pi over 4, all of the cosines are positive because we're on the right side of the x-axis. And remember the x-coordinates of on the unit circle represent the cosine values. So whether I'm finding an angle up here or an angle down here turns out to be my angle C. Either way, it's not going to turn out to be a negative. So I can disregard the negative value there. So we're looking for an angle C such that the cosine of C is equal to the square root of pi over 2. So um, let's suppose that uh, either one of these little um, terminal sides represents our angle C. Either way, they're going to have to have the same reference angle in order to give uh, this result. We're looking for some reference angle alpha such that the cosine of alpha is equal to the square root of pi over 2. That would mean that alpha is the inverse cosine of square root of pi over 2. So we know that our reference angle is the inverse cosine of square root of pi over 2 and you might want to check that you get an angle that's less than 45 degrees less than pi over 4 and in fact you do but we don't want an inexact solution I don't, I'm not looking to round off so I'm actually going to leave this as my angle but I wanted to solve cosine of c equals square root of pi over 2 from negative pi over 4 up to pi over 4 so I need to include both of these so the positive c that's in the first quadrant will just be that co inverse cosine of square root of pi over 2 but the negative angle here is also going to have that positive square root of pi over 2 cosine, so I need the negative version of that angle that happens to have the same reference angle. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please remember to like it. That will help other students to find the video.